Okay, so here is a probability question here, and let's take a moment, uh, pause it, and read the question so you can get a sense of what it's all about. Okay, now that you're back, as you read this question, the first thing I always do is I put notation with every single number that I have. And I'm careful that I use good probability notation. So the flu epidemic says 35% of the students have the flu. So flu. So the probability of flu equals 35%. Of those with the flu, 90 have a high temperature. So, well, that's probably of temperature given they have a flu. So I'm using the conditional notation as it's quite appropriate for this time here. And it's 0.9. However, high temperatures are also possible for people without the flu. In fact, the school's nurse estimates 12% without the flu have high temperatures. So the probability of having a temperature with, but you do not have the flu is 0.12. And so these are the probabilities that we are given. And so what happens now, so now I'm gonna make a tree diagram for the situation. And I'm gonna start off with, I could have the flu or I do not have the flu. And so this is 0 0.35, hence this is 65%. Now, if I have the flu, I could have a temperature with the flu, or I do not have a temperature and still have the flu. This is 0.9, which makes this 0.1. This, I could have the temperature, no flu, or no temperature, no flu. That's what I wish or hope I'm going to be if this is going around. And so this is the 12% and the 88%. So what percent of the students have a high temperature? Well, if I'm only looking specifically for high temperature people, that happens on this part of the branch and on this part of the branch, because they have high temperatures. And so to find a probability of having a high temperature, it's the same as the probability of a temperature and the flu, plus the people who have a high temperature and no flu. That's the notation that comes with it, which is going to be the multiplication of these two branches and then I add them together. So it's going to be 0 0.35 times 0.9 plus the 0.65 times 0.12. And when I do that calculation, I've done it up here already, you can see that it is 0.393%. So 39% of the people have a high temperature at this point in time. Now, the next question is, if the student has a high temperature, so the probability that the student has a high temperature, no, that's not what it's asking for. If he has a high temperature, what is the probability that the student has the flu? I'm looking for the probability of the student having the flu if they have a high temperature. So in this case, this is the reverse conditional of what is given to me. That means I'm going to be using Bayes' theorem. Or if I just do it by knowing it with a formula for a conditional probability says the probability of flu and temperature divided by the probability of temperature. And I always remember that it's divided by the probability of temperature because it's this kind of this notation kind of looks like a fraction and temperature would be on the bottom of the fraction, so that's why I rem that's why I remember that that's on the bottom of this fraction. Well, conveniently so, the probability of temperature, having a temperature, or high temperature, is 0 0.93. I calculate it up here first. And then the probability of fever and temperature is the top branch, which is 0 0.35 times 0 0.9. And if I do this calculation here, let me try that again. Do that. I'm going to go 0 0.35 times 0 0.9 divided by, oh, let me see if I can get that, this value. Nope, doesn't work. Divided by 0 0.393 is 80%. 0 0.8. Zero, zero, two. That's three significant figures. And so the probability of having a flu if I have a high temperature is 80%. So then finally, is t are temperature and flu independent of each other? Well, 
if they are independent of each other, the, whether I have a, the, a temperature, a high temperature or not, shouldn't affect my probability of having the flu. And what I can say is that if the probability of my flu, given I have a temperature, if it equals just the probability of having a flu, if that's true, if it's true, then independent. Well, from my calculations, it is 0 0.802. Does it equal the probability of flu is 35%. 0 0.35 that is clearly not equal therefore it is not independent another way that I could think about independence this is from my formula booklet if these two things are equal then they are independent so if I consider probability of F and T does it equal the probability of F flu times the probability of t. Well, the probability of having a flu was 0 0.35. The probability of having a temperature, a high fever, is 0 0.939. 0 0.393. I said it backwards. And the probability of f and t is this computation here, multiplied 0 0.35 times 0 0.9. 0 0.35 times 0.9 well I can already see those values are the same these are not so it is not equal therefore not independent so that's how we check for independence this way here makes the most sense to me but this uses the formula and it obtains the same outcome so when doing these problems, I always put notation to all of the numbers that I'm given, and I do clear notation using conditional notation or the and notation, whatever is appropriate, and then I just work for the problems as asked.